have to destroy that mirror. Welcome to the Dark Pit Character In-Depth Guide. I will be going over all of Dark Pit's moves as well as some combos, strings, setups, and useful tech you can use to become a better Dark Pit or Pit player. For this guide, I will be using the default controls of the GameCube controller as preference. If you enjoy these Character In-Depth Guide videos, please consider giving the video a like, share the video among other Dark Pit or Pit players, and subscribe to the channel for more similar content. Let's begin! Located Dark Pit. Where is he? Now! Dark Pit first emerged from the Mirror of Truth when Pit fought Pandora in the Labyrinth of Deceit. The mirror produced an exact duplicate of Pit, but allied to the Underworld Army. Pit then shattered the mirror, thus making an imperfect clone. As a result, Dark Pit emerged with a will of his own, allied to no one and enemy of Pit. However, Dark Pit realizes that in order to survive, Pit needs to be alive, so he aids Pit and Palutena for his benefit only. To Dark Pit's dismay, he is theoretically inferior to the original, a flawed copy but fights to find his purpose, giving him the title of the Darkwing Doppelganger. Note, Pit and Dark Pit have the exact same moveset, but the properties of two moves are entirely different. I will go over the differences throughout the guide. Dark Pit overall is an average character. The exception is having multiple jumps, no wall jump, and no crawl. Dark Pit excels in offstage recovery and edge guarding. You will rely on baiting your opponent's unsafe moves and the intangible attacks in his moveset. Once you get your opponent offstage, a simple edge guard can seal the stock. In short, mind your spacing, remain patient, find your opening, get your opponent offstage, edge guard to take the stock. Dark Pit has two jab combo variations. The first variation is a three hit combo that pops the opponent upward. This will set up a situation to predict an air dodge, an attack, or double jump. Predict right and you may be able to inflict follow up damage to your opponent. The second variation is a rapid jab combo. This is entirely to do more damage as it knocks your opponent away horizontally. Both jab combo finishers are unsafe on shield. Be aware if your opponent is defending. Some of the slowest of moves can punish the rapid jab finisher if shielded. Forward tilt has a long reach to punish whiff moves and to poke at your opponent's shield. This move has a sweet spot with a high knockback growth that can KO opponents at high percents near the ledge. This move is unsafe on shield unless it is fully spaced. Down tilt is a fast combo starter or poke. At 0% you have a 12 plus frame advantage to true combo into a neutral air or forward air. Use down tilt to set up a KO option by predicting an air dodge, double jump, or attack. Down tilt is incredibly safe even on shield. Only shield grabs and fast out of shield options can punish down tilt. If spaced out, you should never get punished. Up tilt is an anti-air attack. Though not intangible, it gives you a frame advantage of up to 10 plus. This can lead into a combo especially on heavier fighters. The second hit of up tilt lacks horizontal range and can whiff entirely on a shielding opponent, making it extremely unsafe. Up tilt should only be used for an anti-air. Dash attack is a zone breaking move that gives you stage control and hit advantage if it connects. At very high percents it can KO as well. Dash attack is easily punishable and leaves you vulnerable with minus 6 on shield drops. Out of shield options will easily punish dash attack as well. One of Dark Pit's main KO options. Forward Smash does not have a sour or sweet spot, and has respectable knockback and growth. Use Forward Smash to punish an unsafe move for an easy KO at high percents. Albeit a good move, the first hit of Forward Smash has a gap where a shielding opponent can drop shield to parry or spot dodge between the two hits, leaving Dark Pit greatly vulnerable to a punish. Having the fastest startup in the entire moveset, Down Smash is not that powerful, having low knockback and low growth, as well as a sour spot on the tip. However, it is incredibly fast and can be used to whiff punish, shield drop punish, 
and also 2 frame ledge punish. Down smash will be unsafe on shield unless the second hit is shielded and spaced properly. Up smash is a fantastic anti-air but lacks KO power. The best results will come from the top platforms such as battlefields. Unlike up tilt, up smash has intangibility on the silver bow, making it able to out-prioritize your opponent's aerials. Solid damage and good out of shield option as well. Up smash has plenty of recovery frames, so moves with faster startup will be able to punish from a shield drop. Neutral air is one of the many approach options. You can break combo strings due to its fast startup. It can combo into itself or into other attacks if you auto-cancel the landing lag. Use Neutral Air offstage for an easy edge guard as the knockback will send the opponent towards the blast zone. To be safe, cross up your opponent's shield to dodge the shield grab or retreat backwards to avoid an out of shield option. Forward Air is another approach option and combo tool but with longer startup frames. Its horizontal hitbox reaches further than Neutral Air, making this a great edge guarding move. Similar to Neutral Air, you can auto cancel the landing lag to help you extend juggle combos. Forward Air has a lot more startup and can be beaten out by faster moves. Keep yourself safe by spacing out the forward air on your approach. Down Air has two distinct hitboxes, a meteor effect and a normal effect. The meteor hitbox has an abnormally low amount of hit stun at low percents, meaning you are negative on hit. The second hitbox pops your opponent upward. This move can be used as a good jump out of shield option to combo into neutral air at mid percents. Offstage you can spike an opponent with the meteor effect, but be prepared to do another attack due to the low hit stun. The low hit stun of the meteor effect will be negative on hit at low percents. Try to avoid the meteor effect until later percents to avoid being punished. Up air is a multi-hitting juggle move lacking KO power but keeps your opponent in the air. It has a slow startup but has a drag down effect to extend a combo before reaching the last hit. The hitboxes of up air are directly above dark pit and will generally miss most characters if they crouch. Always use up air to juggle airborne opponents. Back air is another one of Dark Pit's KO moves. It has a sweet spot and a sour spot, with the sweet spot having great knockback. Use back air to edge guard your opponent off stage or confirm from a down throw. With a lot of range, you should be able to beat out most of your opponent's attacks. Back air has the lowest landing lag, but be aware of parries. You'll be unsafe against characters that can low profile a short hop back air. You can auto cancel it the same way as neutral air or forward air. Like most characters, Dark Pit's three grab animations have different startup times and recovery times. Forward throw does a 45 degree angled knockback. Dark Pit recovers quickly enough to true combo into dash attack, forward air, or attack cancel back air at 0% on most characters due to its low base knockback. The knockback growth is very high, making it a strong KO throw at very high percents. You'll also get an edge guard opportunity near the ledge. Down throw is a combo throw primarily at low to mid high percents. You can combo almost anything from down throw such as forward air, neutral air, down air, back air, up tilt, up smash, or even up air if done quickly. At high percents down throw becomes more of a 50-50. Bait the air dodge, the jump away, or outspace a whiffed attack. Back throw has a 45 degree angle and low base knockback and growth. At low percents, certain characters will be forced in a stage tech situation. Dark Pit recovers quickly from the throw, so you may jab lock a missed tech for follow up damage. You can also simply set up an edge guard situation and take stage control. Up throw is the highest damaging throw, however all it gives you is stage control and advantage state. There are no other follow ups, especially at high damage. The Silver Bow is a chargeable projectile that can slowly be guided up or down using the control stick, and as it charges, will do extra damage and knockback. Holding directly up before firing will aim the arrow above Dark Pit. Pester your opponent to stop their zoning game from afar. Use the arrow to snipe your opponent's recovery offstage as well. Avoid using the arrow up close. Even on hit, it can be unsafe. There are two major differences of Dark Pit and Pit's arrows. Dark Pit's arrows do more damage but have a lower curve. Pit's arrows do less damage but have a higher curve. Another one of Dark Pit's main KO options. 
The grounded version of Electroshock can KO opponents early near the ledge due to the high knockback and low horizontal angle. The aerial version is drastically weaker, but if you manage to hit with this move offstage, your opponent is likely to be KO'd early. Landing this move requires a read on your opponent's recovery, dodge rolls, or whiff punishes. Dark Pit will gain a super armor effect against weak attacks, allowing you to fight through and counter attack. Projectiles will also get deflected, so any opponent who foolishly uses projectiles in front of you will take the hit. Although the move is strong and does great shield damage, whiffing or shielded will leave you wide open for any punish. Use only if you are certain you will land the hit. The original's upper dash arm has the same frame data, but the main difference is the damage and angle of the knockback, sending your opponent directly upward for a ceiling KO. The Power of Flight is an amazing recovery move despite not having any active hitboxes. You will cover a large distance and recover even at the lowest of blast zones. Grounded will give you invincibility frames on frames 9 to 19, while Airborne are frames 15 to 19. Time your flight so you will be able to avoid certain attacks. Direct your angle of recovery using the control stick. Try to aim for the ledge when off stage, as the landing recovery is an enormous 40 frames, leaving you heavily vulnerable. The Guardian Orbiters are protective shields that will reflect any projectile back at the opponent with a damage multiplier of 1.5. The shields also repel physical attacks, but will break upon receiving more than 15% physical damage. If the shields break, it must refresh for 10 seconds. Upon using the Orbiters, a Wind Box will push away the opponent if you are directly in front of them. This can be useful to avoid certain grabs or gimp your opponent off stage. The Orbiters can take up to 50% damage from projectiles before being broken. You will still reflect the projectile and not fall into a dizzy state. Although the Orbiters reflect projectiles and stop physical damage, your opponent can still attack you either directly below or above Dark Pit. In this section, I will show you true combos and combo strings starting at 0% up to 100%. Note that most combos are for low percents and eventually most become non-existent at high percents. Most of these combos will work on the majority of the cast, but you may have to adjust what combos you do on certain characters based on their weight, fall speed, and size. Let's begin! At 0% most of your combos will begin with a down throw. All of the following combos are true if done correctly. These are fairly easy to do and if you incorporate attack cancel and instant up airs, you should successfully be able to do most of Dark Pit's combos. You can also start combos with down tilt, however you are limited to a few attacks for true combos. Up tilt leads into strings, so these combos are generally not true. In some instances you can frame trap your opponent. Forward throw can true combo into dash attack, forward air, or attack cancel back air on fast falling characters. Fast fall down air or down air out of shield can also lead into a neutral air as long as you don't hit the meteor effect. Combine strings to create longer damaging combos. You'll be in advantage state and if your opponent tries to attack, you'll likely beat out their moves with your own due to frame trapping. Only certain moves that have a very fast startup will break out of the strings. Some combos past 30% still work well, but as damage increases your combos will gradually get shorter. Finally at 90% plus on most characters, the meteor effect of down air can true combo into a KO confirm. Take note of the opponent's character weight. In this section, I'll be showing you some useful tech to use for unique situations or for the so-called Galaxy Brain plays. Although not many, it would still be better to practice them should the occasion arise. 
When using the silver bow arrow, you have a 1 second charge hold, but you can extend the charge time drastically by constantly aiming back and forth or up repeatedly, useful to play mind games. During electroshock arm, you can hold down to avoid snapping the ledge. The active detection frames could help you net a 2 frame or a ledge regrab on opponents recovering low. It is a very strict timing but possible even on characters that teleport. Since the actual startup of Electroshock is 1 frame, you have to be frame perfect for the 2 frame. At very low percents, back throw can cause a low knockdown. If your opponent misses the tech, you can jab lock with a run up jab or a meteor effect down air. This can lead to a high damaging combo. The Guardian Orbiters have a wind box effect that slightly pushes away enemies. You can gimp opponents with worse recoveries. Examples are Krom, Cloud, or Ness and Lucas who need to aim their PK Thunder. Dark Pit's movement is average at best but with multiple jumps you can easily bait out your opponent's moves to whiff punish in return. Keep your distance with dark pit so you can poke with forward tilt, down tilt, and forward air and neutral air respectively to pressure your opponent's defenses and see how they react. Keep yourself safe by auto cancelling your aerials. While your opponent is off stage, you have a great advantage with multiple jumps. Watch your opponent's recovery options and be ready to intercept them. Have your opponent fear the back air, forward smash, and electroshock arm once they are at high percents. Use down throw, down tilt, sour spot back air, meteor down air, or neutral air to help you set up a KO. Before ending this guide, a special thanks goes to my Discord server for assistance in this video. If you wish to be a member of the Space Pirate Rebellion, I will drop an invite link in the description. We are a friendly community who enjoy arena battles, help each other get better, and overall become great friends. Kid Icarus Uprising footage directed by Masahiro Sakura. Developed by Project Sora, now known as Sora Limited, and published by Nintendo, no copyright infringement is intended. Thanks goes to Kuragane Hammer for the frame data on Pit and Dark Pit. Divinipedia, the number one source for Kid Icarus and its information on related characters and games. I hope this guide helps any pit or dark pit player enhance their experience and become an overall better player. If you enjoyed this guide and found it useful, please give the video a like and share it among other pit or dark pit players. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy similar content and ring the bell for all notifications of future uploads. This is Space23 signing out.